So it, it does this first um, through the use of what's known as a, a root bridge. Um, if we start talking about root, a root bridge, the, the term root bridge is a, a little bit of a misnomer. Um, it, it, today it should really be more thought of as a root switch, the root switch in your network. It's called a root bridge because at the time it was created, um, switches weren't uh, really existing. They just had bridges, which were basically a two-port switch. Um, so whenever it was created, the, this terminology kind of got uh, impounded. So I, when I think of root bridge, I really think of uh, the root switch, but root bridge is the, the term to, um, to note that they're going to be mentioning over and over. So what STP does is it performs an election of all the switches, and the winner of the election serves as the base of calculations and becomes the root of the spanning tree. The, uh, the root bridge is determined by the... Um, the root, the bridge ID, or excuse me, the, the switch ID. Switch ID is a combination of priority and MAC address. The, uh, the priority is an arbitrary number from 0 to 61440, which can be administratively set in increments of 4096. Uh, the default is 32768 or 8000 in hex. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to remember that it's it's not increments of one or anything, it's this 4096. The reason is because of where the particular bits being used for this fall in that string. Um, you know, it's on the 13th bit pattern. Not really important, but basically you're going to want to remember that it's um, it's it's going in, in increments of 4096 and that the default's 32768 if you haven't changed it on a switch. And then of course the, the MAC address is just the uh, the 48 bit MAC of the actual NIC on the switch. So the lowest bridge ID in the root bridge, if all bridge IDs are equal, uh, will be the it will be the root bridge basically if if those are equal the MAC address is used um, if a new switch with a lower bridge ID is added to the network at some point a new election begins so it's it's really advisable that you manually lower the priority on your uh, most reliable switch and I say lower the priority meaning a, a lower number priority is going to be more preferred um, kind of counterintuitive but that's the way it's set up um, if if it's left to just the Mac you'll likely end up using an older switch with a lower Mac address so for example right here you got a, a group of four switches all interconnected and you've got the switch IDs attached to each of those and each number is you know basically the priority followed by the the Mac address and all four of these have 32768 set as a priority because no one's made any changes. So since they all have an equal um, priority to determine the root bridge, you're just going to go based on the lowest MAC address. And so if you look at the different MAC addresses, you can see that A is a 0, 0100, which is lower than, or starts with 0, 0100, which is lower than any of these, so it's going to end up being the root bridge. The problem with that is that, um, well, one, you, you want to have a better idea of where your, your root bridge is going to be at all times, but two, if you're relying just on the MAC address, it's going to choose an older switch because they're, um, usually the switches are all uh, divvied out based on based on age. So, like, the, the first six characters of your MAC are going to all identify the, um, the manufacturer. So let's say you all had, in this it's not the case because they're, they're different, but let's say you had all Cisco switches in here and they all started with 0, 100, 0, you know, 0, 1. And then the, the last six digits are going to be the, um, the specific identifier for that device. Well, it, as Cisco makes these, it's going to increment this. So the first one it's going to create is going to be, you know, w you know, 0, 1, and so forth. So since it's it's relying on a lower MAC address, it's actually going to choose more than likely the older of the switches in your your network to become the root bridge, and you really want to leave that uh, function to whatever you've got that's that's newer and has the best hardware and the most updated firmware. So um, the root bridges also use something called BPDUs or Bridge Protocol Data Units. Um, these bridge IDs are advertised among each other through BPD. BPDUs. Um, they're sent as multicast by the root bridge to other bridge segments every two seconds who forward them to other directly connected switches. As long as the priority of the current root bridge is the lowest value, it's going to remain the root bridge. Um, as soon as you introduce another switch into the network with a lower uh, priority, then you're going to have to go through a, a root bridge election. 
So uh, you also have root, por root ports. Um, in addition to local bridge ID and the root bridge ID, BPDUs contain cost information that helps switches determine the best route back to the route. Um, switch cost is an inverse to bandwidth, so lower costs are, are more preferred, kind of like it with OSPF. Um, after a root bridge is determined, each non-root switch forms an association back to the root bridge based on the lowest total cost path. The port on each switch with the lowest cost path becomes the, the root port. And actually, well, I guess we'll, we'll get to it in just a second. The, uh, the root bridge advertises a cost of zero, uh, which is forwarded to connected switches, uh, which add to the, on the cost of their link to the root. This value is subsequently forwarded to any adjacent switches and so forth. In the event of a tie, the uh, in, in equal cost to the root on the same uh, switch, it's going to use this to determine which, uh, which port to prefer. So first it's going to use the port with the lowest bridge ID. Um, you know, basically which, whichever switch it connects to that has the lowest bridge ID if the other, all other values are equal. If it's the same bridge ID, meaning it'd be uh, multiple links to the same switch, it's going to use the lowest port priority uh, among those two ports. Um, the port priority is actually an arbitrary value that can be changed. The default's 128. If the port priority is also equal, it hasn't been modified, it's still default 128 or is equal otherwise, it's going to use the lowest physical interface number on that switch. So looking at this, uh, this diagram, this comes back to the one we looked at before. Um, on these, the, this guy right here is the bridge ID, or the, the root bridge. The, the bridge IDs on all these, you can see that the priority on every switch is still set to the default of 32768, so we're left to use the, the MAC address to determine which is the root. Uh, A has the lowest MAC address, starts with 0, 100, so we're going to use that. Um, and then, so since it's the, the root bridge, the cost to get to itself is 0, so that's why it advertises that cost out. So it sends that cost via BPDU uh, to both switches, switch B and switch D. And so whenever B and D receive it, they take the cost of zero, and then they add on the cost of the, the path to get there. In this case, each of those ends up being four. So whenever they each of these advertises that BPDU out, their ports, uh, and they're gonna, so it's gonna have a cost of four sent to C on each one of these, added to 19. So you got a total cost on C um, of 23, for both paths, so you know for for B and D, it's it's pretty obvious like what their their direct path to A is. They're directly connected to, it and we know the cost is is the cheapest. With C, we've got two links um, to the root bridge that both have a, a cost of twenty three. So if we go back to the uh, the chart here, uh, everything's equal. So the the cost is equal. So it's going to prefer the port with the lowest bridge ID. So if we go back down here, we have to use the lowest bridge ID uh, between B and D. So since they both have 32768 as their priority, we, we're back to looking at the MAC address. They both start with 0, 0100, 0, 01, 0, 0100, 0, 01, and, oh, excuse me, I'm actually looking at the, the root bridge ID. They both, uh, let's see, B starts with 1234, and D starts with 3462. Since this has the lowest MAC address and they have the same, uh, priority, it's C is going to prefer the link to B as its uh, root port back to the root bridge. So once root ports are determined, designated ports are also determined. Uh, designated ports are the best path between two segments to forward frames from the root. So and th this kind of breaks it down really easily. So we already went through the process of determining the root ports. Uh, all of those are marked with an R. You know, the root port from C is right here, goes through B into A. The root port from B is the direct connection A, so it's this one right here. Um, the root connection from D is right here, directly there. Everything basically back from the, basically pointing the other direction is going to be your designated ports. So both of these ports on A are designated ports because it's the quickest link to uh, B and D. Your, uh, your link on B, the designated port is right here because it's directly to C. And then you also, even though you don't have a root port here, your quickest link between D and C is this link right here. So D is also going to set this port as a designated port. 